Okay, so here is another cheap induction heater that I got off the internet. And I uh, didn't realize I ordered more than one. The other ones that I got, it's got a bunch of fans and claims it's like a thousand watts. This one doesn't have the fans on it. Oh, come on. Another Ziploc bag. Now let's see what's inside of here. Okay, this coil's got less turns than the other one. some kind of PSD bag, and um, I'm going to have to use a razor blade to cut this one open, see what's inside of this. That's good because we have our handy handy razor blade here. There we go. Okay, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to fit this coil. Looks like these are the output terminals here. And they're not really oriented in a very nice way to maybe I put the coil in like that or something. I guess I have to do it that way, I don't know. Or I have to bend these things or something. It doesn't seem like it's really in a very good way to put this coil in there. Maybe I can somehow fit it in there without bending this too much. you got to be careful when you bend these uh, copper um, coils because if, if you don't, usually you'll have to put like sand or something inside of them or have some kind of special bender or they'll crimp and then you'll have a bunch of problems. Okay, so here's the circuit, and um, what is this? Let's take a look at this. So there's no cooling on this circuit. Looks like it's got some capacitors, two inductors, okay, and uh, a couple of transistors. So some probably some kind of self-oscillating high power circuit, and. Looks like there's an input here, and this is labeled as minus, I think. Oh, these things are so bad. Looks like there's a plus on that side over here, and a minus over there, so I'm going to assume that that's the polarity of this guy. Okay. And there's absolutely no instructions with this thing. No instructions at all. Big ass heat sinks. Big ass transistors, a bunch of capacitors here, and some inductors. I'm going to assume that this is like a LC circuit, and it's some kind of self oscillating thing. Looks like there's two diodes in there, so I've seen this kind of circuit before. The diodes go to the gates of the FETs, and they uh, one will drive the other one on, and it's a self-oscillating circuit. Okay, so very interesting. Okay. Anyway, we'll have to test this thing out. Okay, one thing I notice when the coils come, they're all kind of crunched together. I think you want to probably try to stretch them out, because you don't want the, the windings to short to each other. To stretch these windings out a little bit. So they're not all touching. I think that would be bad. It'll just probably heat up while they're touching because it won't be a good connection, but it will be a kind of a short. Okay. And I gotta fiddle with this a little bit more because they're still touching a little bit in some places. be interesting. Okay, so here we have um, here we have our coil here. I kind of spaced out the windings so that they're not shorting, it looks like. 
and um, here's our little power supply which I may use this for some other things I may reverse engineer this and modify it so this is a neat little power supply I was planning to build something like this but if this is already built look at this it's really cool it's got high power resistors I think it's a self oscillating circuit two transistors two inductors possibly two capacitor banks and here is the output of our device right here into this coil and I believe these are the two terminals of the output and um, here I have a screwdriver oh. oh gosh I'm gonna need a bigger screwdriver I guess to undo these because they're torqued really hard okay okay here we got a better screwdriver so we can oh, break these screws loose oh really it's torquing from the other side I'm gonna need a channel locks or something to undo that screw I guess look at that they're unscrewing from both sides oh come on okay that one's being good well, let me fiddle with this I'm gonna get these fixed up hopefully okay it looks like I was able to grab onto um, these posts with a uh, crescent wrench and undo the screws at the top Okay, this one's already undone. Come on. Okay. And we'll just loosen up these top things. And uh, let's see what I did the other induction heater. <coughs> let's see. I just fed it through these these leads like so. So this one goes through there like. to be looser. Okay, loosen these up a little bit more. Okay. Let's see if we can get these through here. up some more. camera to do okay so I fed the first one through there and it's really kind of extending a long ways and I'll try to get the second one into the other one oh come on like so and I guess it's really close as the screws the first one are coming out let, let me fiddle with this some more and we'll see if we can get that in okay okay so I have the first one through there and I'm going to make sure it doesn't short against anything in this circuit. And uh, try to bend this other one up over there and get it under this tab thing. Oh, God. This first one's coming apart. Okay, so there. Let's see, see if I can tighten these up, get them in place. Okay, okay so I've been. Um, down being very careful and then bending it back out so we can hopefully get this tab thing over that like so. okay. and maybe get the screw in place oh, come on there like so 
so I will try to tighten these screws up. And I kind of bent it in such a way so that the coil is kind of more vertical because the other one, the coils only really fits horizontal. And so this might be nice to have a more vertical type coil so you can stick samples in it and just have them sit like this vertically. Okay. And uh, maybe I try to bend this tube away from these coils because I don't want to short them out. I'm going to have to fiddle with that. Maybe bend that tubing some more. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going around tightening up all these screws in this clamp thing. Make sure this is clamped down well. Okay. Interesting, huh? Okay, here we have our induction heater, our uh, new smaller one. And I have my lithium battery. I'm just going to run it at 12 volts now. And I believe this polarity is correct because this has a minus sign on, on this side down here. You probably don't want to hook it up backwards. So when I hook it up, the green light comes on. And um, let's take our scope probe and we'll br just bring it near this device, this coil, and if we, okay, okay, so let's just bring our scope probe near the coil here, and when we bring it near, you can see we're getting a signal here on the scope, and it is, I already put the cursors in place, about 87 kilohertz, okay, so it's a much higher frequency actually. As I move the probe away and closer, of course, the coupling between the probe becomes stronger and weaker. Okay. But definitely putting out power, oscillating, and that's 87 kilohertz, okay? Okay, so it looks like our device is working. Okay, we'll have to test it out and see if we can heat some stuff up.